Good evening and welcome to Kini News. Here are today's top stories. Malaysian politics is so full of surprises. If Anwar can work with Mahathir, well, will we see Pakatan Harapan working with Perikatan Nasional in the 15th general elections? This was a proposal made by one of PKR's newest members. Former Malacca Chief Minister Idris Harun has called on Pakatan Harapan and Perikatan Nasional to unite against Barisan Nasional in the next general election. Idris, who is now with PKR, said Harapan needs a quote, wow factor to score big in the 15th general election. Dia kena ada satu wow factor. Yeah, wow factor ataupun um factor. Wow factor ni uh, ada sesuatu besar berlaku di dalam PH. Uh, saya melihat kalau PH uh, pergi solo, uh, kita mungkin berhadapan dengan kesukaran uh, pembahagian pengundi-pengundi uh, itu mengikut penyokong-penyokong parti. Idris was sacked from UMNO in October after he and three other Malacca State Assembly persons attempted a political coup against the UMNO-led state government. The coup failed when Chief Minister Sulaiman Mad Ali advised the Malacca governor to dissolve the state legislative assembly, which triggered a snap state election. Idris then contested in the election on a PKR ticket but failed in his attempt to capture the Asahan state seat. The idea of a corporation, however, doesn't really sound appealing, according to Bersatu, which is the party that leads Perikatan Nasional. Idris Harun's proposal for Harapan to join forces with Perikatan Nasional has not impressed Bersatu Deputy President Faisal Azumu. Faisal said the former Malacca chief minister should find better ways to spend his free time. When asked for comments, Faisal suggested that his old friend go on a holiday. Faisal also hinted that it would be unreasonable to expect any successful outcome from PN Harapan cooperation, like trying to quote, rare fish while mixing seawater with fresh water. Similarly, Faisal also downplayed Warisan's national expansion, which was officially announced earlier today, describing PN as the quote, more attractive option. However, don't fret, there is a new option for voters in Peninsula Malaysia. Warisan, the Sabahan party, has expanded to cover the West and will be working with Muda in the 15th general elections. The Sabah-based Warisan has expanded to a national party with a promise to set the country on the right path. In his keynote speech, Warisan President Shafi Abdal expressed concern about the country's bickering over petty and divisive issues. He promised to transition the country from a political system of race and religion to inclusivity. We must believe change can be done. We must have the will. But will and desire cannot be realized a success without a proper planning, without all the good values that we have in our life. We cannot just expect people to vote us, please vote me. Because I'm your relative, because I'm from that place, I'm from there, I'm young, I'm, you know, I've been serving. That. No. We are here to serve the people and the country and putting Malaysia on the right path. Shafi said many countries have done fine without race-based or religious-based parties. Shafi also compared Rory Sun with other self-proclaimed multiracial parties based in Peninsula Malaysia, which he said was only multiracial in name. Parti apa yang dikatakan berbagai bangsa? DAP, PKR, PKR siapa presiden dia? Timbalan dia siapa dia? Setiausaha agung dia siapa dia? Ketua penerangan dia siapa dia? Setiausaha agung siapa? Begitu juga parti-parti yang lain yang kita katakan berbagai kaum yang ada, dah ada ramai yang ada. Tapi itu pada ungkapan saja. Amalan tak reflect the real truth of what multiracialism is. Bila kita lahirkan Parti Warisan, who is the president of Parti Warisan? Syafi'i Amtal, orang Islam. Rumpun Melayu, siapa timbalan dia? They're a liking, can you stand there? He's a Christian. Orang muda, very young. Kita nakkan, siapa vice president? Jun Wong is a Chinese. Who is the Secretary General? Lorito. Paduan, where is he? He's gone to the toilet. <laughs> Siapa Bendahari? Terence Ambun. Berbagai bangsa. The boss of the main contractor for the undersea tunnel project in Penang testified in court today and his testimony against Lim Guan Eng will shock you. Zarul Ahmad Mohamad Zulkifli testified he was shocked when Lim Guan Eng allegedly asked for 10% future profit from the Penang Undersea Tunnel Project. The Consortium Zenit Construction Senior Executive Director was the 22nd prosecution witness in the corruption trial against the former Penang Chief Minister Lim in relation to the project. 
Zarul claimed that the accused asked this from him while they were both in a car in Kuala Lumpur on a night in March 2011. Zaro claimed earlier that night he gave an agreement to Lim in relation to the holding of an MOU event in order that the accused would grant the undersea tunnel project to his company via direct negotiation. The witness alleged that between 8 pm and 9 pm on that night, he had met Lim at an Italian restaurant on Jalan Ampang with then de facto law minister Nazri Abdul Aziz. Zaro claimed that nothing about the undersea tunnel project was discussed during the dinner and that the trio only had casual chats. He said that around 11.45 p.m., Lim asked to be taken back to where he was staying at Hotel Gardens in Mid Valley, Kuala Lumpur. The witness claimed that while in the car, Lim supposedly asked him for 10% future profit on the island state's 6.3 billion ringgit project. Consortium Zenit Construction is the main contractor for the undersea tunnel project. We'll take a break for our sponsor and when we're back, find out why Christmas may not have been cancelled after all, despite the detection of the Omicron variant. Don't go anywhere. Shellfish, red meat, and beer. If you love indulging in these foods, you may end up with high uric acid level in your blood. These foods consist high level of purine, a substance that will eventually break down into uric acid and be excreted through our urine. It is recommended that the amount of dietary purines should be kept between 600 to 1000 milligrams per day. Having too much uric acid in your blood can cause attacks of gout. It can also cause kidney stones and blockage in the kidney. The crystallization of the excessive uric acid in your blood can be eased by reducing purine-rich food to only 100 to 150 milligrams daily, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and consuming urinary alkalinizer like Ural. It consists of sodium bicarbonate, citric acid, and sodium citrate that increases the urinary pH and solubility of uric acid to prevent crystallization. Best of all, it's lemon-flavored and sugar-free. Ura, effective urinary alkalinizer. Neutralize your uric acid problem now. Welcome back. No large public celebration will be allowed for both Christmas and New Year's Eve. However, you'll still be able to have a jolly good time with your family and those who matter. Churches in the country will be allowed to hold choir performances in conjunction with Christmas. However, it will only be allowed on the condition that those involved practice physical distancing of at least one meter and wear face masks or face shields. The National Unity Ministry said this is part of the standard operating procedure for the Christmas celebration on the 24th and 25th of December. National Unity Minister Halima Mohammad Sadiq said the SOP was approved at the COVID-19 ministers' meeting on Thursday. Prayer ceremonies are also allowed according to the SOP for opening of non-Muslim houses of worship under the National Recovery Plan. Apart from this, only those who have been fully vaccinated are allowed to make family visits during Christmas. House-to-house -house caroling is prohibited while stalls for Christmas Day sales can be set up subject to the approval of local authorities. Halima urged Christians to celebrate Christmas under the new normal by always observing the SOP, including wearing face masks and practicing physical distancing to help break the COVID-19 chain of infection in Malaysia. Remember how in days gone by you used to have to pay one ringgit to use an ATM that didn't belong to your bank? Well, that was before the pandemic because soon we're going to have to start paying that fee again. The upcoming reinstatement of the one ringgit fee for interbank ATM withdrawals is not sitting well with the Federation of Malaysian Consumers Associations. In fact, FOMCA is calling it daylight robbery by the banks. FOMCA Vice President K. Koris Atan said the banks are doing this when the people are already suffering. He explained that many who still rely on cash transactions via ATMs are senior citizens or people living in rural areas. Reinstating the one ringgit fee would only make the poor poorer amid the current economic pressures. In April last year, the government announced that the one ringgit per transaction fee for interbank ATM withdrawals would be waived. The waiver came into effect on April 6th. Some banks had already waived the fee before the announcement was made. This allowed account holders to make cash withdrawals from any ATM in the country without incurring the fee. On Monday, lawmakers will be back in the Dewan Rakyat to debate the Act 342 Amendment Bill. However, the DAP has already stated their position. 
The bill to amend the Anti-Pandemic Law Act 342 will be opposed by the DAP when it is debated on Monday. Party Secretary General Lim Guan Eng called the new amount of punishment being proposed by the Health Ministry as astronomical and, quote, harshly punitive on the rakyat. According to him, the proposal to amend the law was also not brought to the Special Committee on COVID-19 Management for discussion. Lim also urged Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob to explain why this was not deliberated first in the Special Committee before being tabled in Parliament. The Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act currently gives the Health Director General the power to impose a maximum of 1,000 ringgit fine against individuals who flout standard operating procedures. However, under an amendment that the Health Ministry is proposing to Parliament, an offender may be looking at a maximum fine of 100,000 ringgit, a jail term not exceeding seven years, or both. The Health Ministry has since lowered some of the penalties in the bill. This was after Opposition Leader Anwar Ibrahim declared that the Opposition cannot support the bill in the form that it was tabled. It was revised to 50,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years in the case of an individual, while the punishment for a corporate body was reduced to a fine not exceeding 500,000 ringgit. Well, that's a wrap for Kini News this evening. For more stories, go to kinitv.com. Don't forget that you can follow us on our social media on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook to get the latest news headlines. If you'd like to support the independent media, please do consider a subscription to malaysiakini.com. When you're heading out, don't forget your mask. And when you can, do try to stay home unless you're in Sarawak. Then please go out and exercise your right to vote tomorrow. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your weekend. And as always, stay safe, Malaysia. Everyone wants to see these scenes bigger. That's why we've got bigger TVs for everyone to enjoy them bigger. Watch colors come to life on a large screen. LG Nanocell.